Welcome, everyone, and thank you for making time today to join us for our Capitol Hill Club Day webinar um, to discuss uh, the Capitol Hill Club and what you can expect from your Hill meetings that day, as well as what we will be trying to accomplish on the Hill. So we really appreciate everyone making the time this afternoon. Um, today, we're going to be covering a handful of different topics, um, but we want to make sure, A, you know, we cover the CHC app. It's going to be a real critical piece of your uh, Capitol Hill Club experience. Um, we'll go into more depth and detail later on in this webinar, but it's where you'll find where your meetings are, who you'll be meeting with, um, a lot of the information that you'll be using in those meetings. So it's a real critical piece of your experience that day. We'll also walk you through a little bit of the schedule and logistics for Capitol Hill Club. Make sure you guys have a really good sense of where you need to be at what times and kind of how it'll go about that day. Um, we'll also talk to you a little bit about what your meetings will be like. Um, every meeting is different, but you know they're uh, all generally will have a little bit of a standard sort of structure to them. Um, so we want to make sure that you guys are as well prepared as possible going into those meetings. And then we've also got uh, Armstrong Robinson with us today, and he'll kind of walk us through a little bit of Retirement Policy 101. Um, so a little bit about what we'll be talking to with legislative offices on the Hill. So again, my name's Josh Karen. Um, I'll be walking you through the webinar today. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. Um, let me first start though by letting you know this is an interactive webinar. Um, if you do have any questions at any point in time, um, please just use the chat function or the Q&A function that's at the bottom of your screen. Uh, that's where you'll go ahead and be able to submit questions to us and any questions that we get, we will do our best to answer why we are here today. Um, but if we don't get to your question, we'll we make sure to follow up with you after the webinar. Um, and obviously at any point, anybody here at ALU on the political affairs team or the legislative affairs team, more than happy to answer any of your questions on any of this. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and dive right into the app. Uh, Emily Tavino, take it away. All right, thank you so much, Josh. Um, so as Josh mentioned, one of the most critical parts of your day on Capitol Hill will be to download and use our AALU CHC app. Um, this is going to be in the App Store. It is different from the kind of general overall Transform app. Um, this is an app we used for our Capitol Hill Club day meetings. Um, it will have your schedule in it, which is the most crucial part. Um, that is going to be downloaded in real time, so you can kind of keep track Make sure your meetings are the times that you saw previously. Make sure if there's any changes that you get notified of that. You will want to enable push notifications when you do download the app um, so you can get the most up-to-date information that way. The login for the CHC app is going to be the email address you use to register for CHC and transform. And your password is going to be all caps CHC 2019. So in addition to your schedule, the app will also include maps, your legislator biographies, directory of attendees, and again, messages and notifications. So here's the first screen of what the app will look like once you log into it. For now, your meetings are disabled. We are going to be making those live as we get a little bit closer to transform. But when you log in, you will see what meetings you have for the day. You'll be able to see the time, You'll be able to see the locations, and you'll be able to see who you are meeting with, if it's the member of Congress themselves or someone on the member staff. Now, the screenshot you see on the right-hand side of your screen, if you click on a meeting, that will pop up. That gives you a map of the location of the member of Congress's office. And if you turn on location services for the app, you will be able to see a blue dot where you're located and kind of track your progress as you're making your way to the office. An additional thing you will see on that screen is the attendees for your meeting. If you click that little thing at the bottom, a, uh, a list will pop up that will give you all the meeting attendees for you to connect with and message within the app so you can make sure you're all going to the meetings together. So on this screen, you see what are the documents for CHC. Not all of these are currently uploaded, but a lot of them are. Um, these are going to be your talking points for the meetings on Tuesday, April 30th. These are going to be other documents, you know, like a map, how to tell an effective story, how to conduct a meeting, and really anything you need for your day on Capitol Hill. Um, you will be getting folders at our in-person breakout session, which has a lot of this information. But if you want it digitally, which we highly recommend, make sure you download the app and you have that all 
kind of right at your fingertips. Um, some other information that's available, there's a directory. Um, if you hit more on the app, that will give you access to everyone in the lobby day, which is CHC 2019. You can kind of contact and message, um, you know, anyone you want through that feature. All right, and then this screen right here, again, just more information um, on the meeting screen. Um, you have your documents there. Meeting summary, which is something you see below documents, that is gonna be your survey for each meeting that you go into. So one of the things we are asking you to do, uh, because a lot of this information, you know, one of the most important things we do once we have these meetings are to actually get feedback on how the meeting went what the member of Congress said, what maybe a member of his or her staff said. We would like you to fill out these meeting surveys um, to kind of go through a couple of easy questions um, and give us some feedback about how your meeting went. And that will be sent to us to kind of collect that information. So that's all we have on the CHC app. Again, really important that you download it, mainly for the number one purpose of getting the real-time information on your meeting schedule. Day of Capitol Hill Club, um, there are going to be votes that are called. There are going to be committee meetings that popped up. Things are going to change, um, sometimes pretty rapidly and at the last minute. So we want to make sure you have the most up-to-date information on who you're meeting with, where you're meeting, um, and what time you need to be there. So with that, I will go ahead and pass it to Josh. Yeah, thanks, Emily. And again, you know, just to reinforce, the app is really the most, you know, one of the most critical tools for CHC Day. Um, it is the one place where you can really stay up to date on a lot of information. So it's a great tool to have. Uh, so thanks, Emily, for going through that. Um, well, let's talk a real quickly about the schedule for Capitol Hill Club Day. Um, so just want to make sure that everyone's got a good sense of what the day will look like. Um, so Capitol Hill Club Day is Tuesday, April 30th. And we've got meetings scheduled up on the Hill from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, main stage session will end and then you'll be able to jump on buses that'll take you um, directly to the hill. Um, so that's when the day and your meetings are going to be held within that time frame. Um, we do have a in-person prep session uh, for you guys uh, that same day. Go over some of the same material as well as, you know, give you the chance to ask uh, questions in person as well as going into a little bit more depth on some of these things. Um, that prep session is going to be Tuesday, April 30th from 9.30 in the morning till 1030 in salon number five. Um, it's also during this session that we will go ahead and distribute some of your materials that you'll be using um, and provide a little bit of time to meet with uh, other folks that are in your group. So definitely please mark your calendars to be in that session to make sure that you're again all ready to go up to the hill and meet with legislators. Um, most meetings will likely have, or most people, excuse me, will likely have one to two meetings. Um, we'll also a little bit of time to go to town hall, you know, so that'll go uh, give you the ability to not only be able to go up on the hill, meet with legislators and their staff, but also get a chance to experience some of the town halls. Town halls this year, we've got a lot of really good speakers. Um, so that's what the day will kind of look like, big picture, um, just so you have a good sense of that. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the to, excuse me, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the actual town halls themselves, or excuse me, the logistics. Do you want to cover, Josh, real quick, how long it takes to get places? Because that's an important component. Yeah, of course. And thanks, Army. That's a, that's a good, uh, good thing to point out. Um, it does take a little bit to get from the Marriott Marquis to um, the Hill. Buses will be running on a loop, um, and so they'll be able to go ahead and grab you. Um, and drive you right down there. It probably will take about, you know, a half an hour, give or take-ish, um, you know, it, trying to consider traffic and making sure that you've got enough time to get over to the hill. Um, so that's going to be a piece of that. But we'll go into a little bit more depth and detail on the actual bus uh, bus routes in a second. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit of the, again, staying on the schedule portion of it for that day. Um, we've got a number of town halls that we'll be featuring. These are really great opportunities to kind of hear from different um, members of Congress, uh, address the uh, the group and talk a little bit about not only, you know, the, the broader profession, but also some of the pieces of legislation that you'll be talking to congressional offices on. So we've got three town halls scheduled for that day. Um, they're going to be all in the same place. Um, it's going to be the Senate Dirksen office building, uh, G11. So that's going to be the office that we're in. Um, it's going to be on the Senate side. We'll be in there all day. There will also be opportunities for you to stop by 
um, grab a glass of water, you know, sit down. It kind of will be also a function as a place to be able to kind of uh, relax for a little bit and potentially in between meetings. Uh, the town halls are, at, there's one at one o'clock, one at two o'clock, and one at three o'clock. At one o'clock, we're gonna go up from City Hall to the Halls of Congress. So that's actually gonna feature Jane Campbell, who's the president of the U.S. Capitol Historical Society. And she was also the 56th mayor of Cleveland. This is a really cool opportunity for you guys to participate in. This. The Capitol building's got a lot of historical details and knowledge, which is great. Um, and, and Jane Campbell actually runs the Historical Society, which is probably the preeminent uh, group in terms of historical knowledge of the Capitol. We oftentimes will use them for tours. They have a lot of really good information. Um, at two o'clock, we've also got a, a session from producer to politician that's gonna feature Congressman Brad Schneider. Brad Schneider actually used to be an AOU member. He comes from the life insurance industry, um, and now he's a sitting member of Congress who's also on the Ways and Means Committee. Um, so not only does he have incredible knowledge about what you guys do, considering that he used to do it, um, he also sits on the Committee of Jurisdiction that oversees a lot of our issues. And so, you know, that's somebody that's gonna be really interesting to hear from. We've also got a Ways and Means Outlook um, for 2019 at 3 p.m. that is uh, gonna be hosted by uh, Chairman Richie Neal on the Ways and Means Committee. Um, and again, kind of continuing the theme, uh, Chairman Neal used to be a mass mutual agent uh, back uh, before he was a member of Congress. So he knows our issues and in our industry really, really well and is at the forefront and the leader um, in the retirement space and the issues that we care about. So it's gonna be great to hear from him what he's got in mind, and especially uh, the pieces of legislation that you guys are talking about up on the Hill. Um, so those are gonna be the three town halls, again, all in Senate Dirksen G11. Um, so that'll be the one place you'll have to go for the town halls. We then start our closing reception at 4.30. Um, that's gonna be at the rooftop of 101 Constitution. Um, so that's gonna be right in our office building, right on the roof, great views of the Capitol. We've also invited members of Congress and their staff to come to that event. So not only do you have a chance to meet them up on the Hill in their offices, you also get a chance to spend a little bit of time up on the roof um, and, and engaging with them in a little bit more of a social setting, which is great. So if at any point um, you have questions during your trip, uh, make sure to stop by the adv advocacy desk at the hotel. Um, we're gonna be on mezzanine two. And so if at any point you would like to stop by, ask us a question about your schedule, ask us a question about what you're gonna be talking about, ask us a question about the logistics, ask us a question about the buses, whatever it may be on your Capitol Hill Club experience, just stop by the advocacy desk. We'll be more than happy to help you um, and answer any questions that you might have. So let's go ahead and, and talk a little bit more on logistics. Um, so like Army mentioned, we are gonna be having buses that are gonna be running directly from the hotel to the Hill. The first bus leaves at 12 p.m. and the last bus leaves at 7. So that's going to be your way back and forth from the hotel to the hill and then back again. Um, after 4 p.m., there is going to be an additional stop added for 101 Constitution. So as you're coming back from the hill or maybe if you didn't go up to the hill and, you know, you're just coming over from the hotel, um, you'll be able to get to 101. We are where we're going to be uh, doing the closing reception. And then that stop will pick you up um, from 101 and then bring you back to the hotel after the closing reception so you can grab your luggage and head to the airport if you're leaving that evening. Um, a bag lunch will be provided for those who are going straight from the hotel in the last main stage session and then heading straight to the hill. Lunches will be provided, be provided as you're going to the bus. So you'll be able to grab those, grab something, grab something to eat and then get on the way uh, or get going up to the hill. One of the things I want to make sure that we definitely do flag, um, luggage must be stored at the hotel. Um, we don't have space at 101 Constitution to hold folks' luggage. So just try to keep that in mind as you're planning your exit strategy. If you're taking the train, if you're taking the, a plane, however you're getting back to your home, um, just please know that you'll have to go back to um, the hotel at the Marriott Marquis to grab your luggage. So that's an important part. I want to make sure that you guys um, know that. Well, and Josh, if I may, once the bus drops you off, it can take you as much as another 15 to 20 minutes to get to the office. Mm -hmm. so it's really important to factor that into your logistical plan for the afternoon. So also uh, on the buses, on the screen right now, there's actually a map of the bus route and where some of the uh, really important offices that you will be visiting that day. 
So you notice there is two places um, that I really want to highlight for you is there is a pickup spot and a drop off spot. The drop off spot will be at Garfield Circle. And so that's where the buses will drop you off once you leave from the Marriott Marquis. Um, that is on the left side of the screen. Um, you'll see it with a, a big red box around it that says drop off. So that's where they're going to drop you off to go up to your meetings. On the left, or excuse me, on the top side of the screen, you'll see the Senate side um, where you have the Russell Building, the Dirksen Building, and the Hart Building. And then on the bottom part of your screen, you'll see the House side, the Rayburn Building, the Longworth Building, and the Cannon Office Building. These are where all your meetings are going to be. So you can kind of get a sense of the distance once you do get dropped off at the bus, or excuse me, at Garford Circle, where you'll have to go to go to your, um, to your meetings. Just kind of at a quick glance, if you've got a meeting in a cannon in the Cannon Building or in the Hart Building, it's going to take you a little bit to walk over there. Like Army said, you know, possibly 15 to 20 minutes from where you get dropped off. So factor that in when you're um, just trying to figure out your logistics for the day. Um, the pickup place for when you will want to go back to the hotel is very close to where you're being dropped off at the Garfield Circle. It's at the Peace Monument. So that's just north um, and just a little bit above where the red box for the Garfield Circle is. You'll see the pickup spot. You'll also see if you continue just north of that, um, a little bit above where the Peace Monument is, um, where 101 Constitution is. So that's where the closing reception will be. Um, so all these things are really close to each other, but you know there is a little bit difference, uh, or excuse me, a little bit of a walk contained. So you kind of see that there. Again, you know, important part to highlight: this stop at 101 Constitution doesn't start till four. So from 12 to four, you will be dropped off in front of the Capitol. So this is just an FYI. Um, you can very easily from any of these office buildings walk back to 101. You don't have to try to catch a bus or anything like that to go over to 101. So just as a flag for that point. Um, so there's a lot of good information on this map. You'll also have this in your CHG app. So you'll be able to see where exactly you need to go, um, where your office meetings are, and when you're going to, uh, to 101 Constitution where you need to be. So kind of let me let me kind of run through a little bit. And again, at any point, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to use the chat function or the Q&A function so that we can answer it. But, you know, oftentimes when I talk to members, you know, what they'll ask me is, what should I expect when I get up on the hill? What's my meeting going to look like? What are some of the things I need to know as I'm going up there? So, you know, real quick, let me kind of go through some of the high level stuff of what to expect on Capitol Hill. First thing is that the Capitol is a very, very busy place. There's lots of people who are there to meet with their legislators. There's lots of people that work in these office buildings. There are generally press, sometimes protesters. So it's a busy environment. So be prepared for that. Um, one of the things to keep in mind as you are heading up to the Hill is that there are security at these office buildings. So depending on the time of the debate, time of day, depending on what else is going on, you're going to have to wait through a security line to get into a building. Um, if you've got a 2.30 meeting and you show up to the front of the building at 2.25, you are likely going to be late. Um, we don't know how long exactly the security lines, lines do run, but it's something to keep in mind so you give yourself enough time. Another thing, once you do get into the actual physical office building, sometimes navigating them and finding exactly the office you need to get into will take a little bit of time. Um, so again, give yourself ample time so that you can figure out which office you're going into, which floor it's on, and, and be able to find it and still make sure that you're on time for your meeting. Um, one of the things to know about meetings uh, with members of Congress is that all, the members have very, very busy schedules themselves. They are oftentimes scheduled in 15-minute increments. They are running around to committees, uh, to committee meetings, to go, to go vote. Um, they handle a lot, for di lot of different responsibilities during the day. So please expect to meet with staff, and this will be noted in your um, CHC app, so let you know exactly who you're meeting with when you're walking up to the office. But staff is a very important feature of a congressional office. Oftentimes, these are the folks that are the experts. These are the folks that really go in depth and detail on the policy issues that we care about and are the direct line to the member of Congress. So even if the member is unavailable to meet with you at that time, gets pulled into another meeting, uh, gets pulled on the floor to go vote, um, staff is a crucial part of that. And so they will be um, some of the folks that you do meet with. Please give them the same courtesy that you do with the members. Um, be on time. Uh, it's, you know, and again, as we just kind of talked about, offices are heavily scheduled, oftentimes in 15 minute increments. If you are five to 10 minutes late, you've kind of, you know, overstepped or, you know, taken up a lot of the scheduled time for you to meet. 
If you are going to be late, they can adjust. Just please go ahead and give them a call if you are going to be late. And again, that information is in the CHG app. So if you find yourself running behind, pull that up, give the office a call, let them know that you're just a couple minutes behind. Um, also know that meetings can occur anywhere. They might be inside the office, they might be in the lobby, they might be in the halls of the building. Um, we've definitely been in meetings in which you start meeting with a member of Congress, they have to walk to go vote, and you have a conversation with the member on the way to their uh, being able to go vote. Um, and so, you know, be aware of that. Um, that's just one of the features of having meetings in Capitol Hill. Um, also, oftentimes these offices are very, very small, so you might just be finding a place where you can have a quick, quiet conversation. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're going up to the hill. Um, you will do a lot of walking. Um, this will also be at the end of a three-day conference where you'll be doing a lot of walking around. So please wear comfortable shoes. Um, it's one of those things that oftentimes gets overlooked, but after a long day of walking around the hill, your feet will probably be hurting a little bit. So go ahead and wear comfortable shoes. And the last thing I'll kind of say on this front, um, please keep politics out of this. Um, you know, you are here, you are coming to Capitol Hill Club to uh, advocate on behalf of the clients and communities you serve, as well as the profession that you find yourself in. Um, you do not get a lot of time with a member of Congress and or their staff, so you wanna make sure that you stay on message, you stay on topic, you're talking about the things that you came here to talk about. Um, there's lots of interesting things going on in the country, lots of in interesting things going on in Congress with the administration, whatever it may be, but please keep politics out of it, stay to the message that you're there to talk to so you can ensure you have the most effective and productive meeting possible with the amount of time that you do get with the member of Congress and or their staff. So that's an important piece, make sure you keep politics out of it. So let's talk a little bit about what your meetings are gonna look like and some of the materials that we're gonna provide for you to make sure that you have the most successful meeting you possibly can. Um, on the screen, you see a, a one pager that we're actually gonna provide. It's one of the materials you're gonna get in that prep session that we talked about on Tuesday that day, that morning at 9.30. Um, so the agenda is kind of laid out, and this is really meant to be a guide for you um, to kind of help you kind of organize your thoughts and organize how you want to approach the meeting itself. Um, you know, it's one of the things that I talk about with our ambassadors very, very frequently. Um, the reason why it's so important for you guys to be engaged politically, for you guys to come to DC to meet with legislators during Transform, is that you are the best possible advocates on behalf of your clients, your communities that you serve, the businesses that you have, and the profession that you work in. Um, there is simply no better advocate than somebody who is a constituent, a practitioner, someone who does this on a day-to-day -day basis. Members of Congress look to you for that information. They really rely on your expertise when they're making policy choices. So this is you know, a, a huge piece of your advocacy efforts and AOU's advocacy efforts. So again, thank you for coming. But you know, we definitely want you to focus on telling the story of what you do for your clients and communities every single day. Um, there is always a, you know, a continuing uh, change in policy, right? There's different pieces of legislation that AOU might be advocating on. But the thing that is constant all the time is the noble work that you guys do with your clients every single day. So as you kind of look at the way we've laid out, you know, what you can expect from, from a meeting, you're going to have about 15 minutes, um, again, either with a member of Congress and or their staff. Um, so you want to go ahead, once you sit down, kind of have an idea of what you want to say going in and kind of have some high points that you want to hit. So this one pager kind of lays out how you can tell your story effectively. How can you connect that member of Congress and or their office to the good work that you do, and then finish it off with, you know, a pitch for a piece of policy that we think will make it easier for you to do what you do. So you're going to want to start off by introducing yourself, um, having a little bit of chit chat, you know, oftentimes you might be from the same hometown, have attended the same high school, um, you know, like the same sports, whatever it may be. So oftentimes there's that introductory chit chat, just like you kind of do with a, uh, with a client meeting, right? Um, so kind of talk a little bit about um, yourself, where you're from, introduce yourself. If you've got a connection to the district, you know, go ahead and share that. Um, but also you want to highlight the importance of what you do, helping Americans plan for their financial security and for their retirement. So that's a big thing that you're there to do. Um, then you want to go ahead and get into a little bit of the overview. Why are you here today? Why are you here to talk to that office? You want to talk a little bit about what business are you in? How long have you been in the industry? How many folks, if you employ people, how many folks do you employ? Um, let them know sort of, you know, your footprint in the community and what you do for a living. Um, you also want to talk a little bit about your day to day. Um, it's one of the things, you know, how 
is what you do, why is what you do so important to Americans who are planning for their financial security? Um, if you can go ahead and talk a little bit about what you do, that's oftentimes really successful, kind of creating that link and gives uh, the person that you're talking with a little bit of background on you. You also want to talk a little bit about the types of clients that you help. Um, you might work with businesses, you might work with families, you might work with individuals, whatever it might be, um, you want to talk a little bit about what you do for a living. Those things are great. One note of caution, um, whenever I, you know, you're going in to talk to a member of Congress, you always want to try to focus on small businesses, on middle class families, on regular Americans that you're helping. You know, why, you know, you might have larger clients here and there, you might work with big businesses. You know, oftentimes the stories about small business and middle class families are really what resonates with the members of Congress in their office. So that's where you want to kind of focus your, uh, your, your talking points. You also want to, if you can, tell a story. Um, it's one of the things members of Congress and their staff meet with so many people every day that oftentimes they um, don't get a chance to remember every single fact and figure you throw at them. But if you do tell them a good story, that's something that they're going to remember. So if you've got a story about a client that you help plan, uh, if you've got a story about a business that you help plan, uh, you know, those are great things to kind of relate to a member of Congress. And then also remember to make your ask. You're there to advocate on the behalf of your clients and the profession. So go ahead and make sure that you do that. Um, Army will talk a little bit about the specifics here, but you know, at the end of kind of introducing yourself, tell, talking a little bit about your business, the types of clients that you have, and, and telling a story about which, uh, how you um, have helped a person or a business, you know, how you, you sharing that story. Once you've kind of shared that story, make sure you make your ask. Um, and so, you know, Army will kind of walk through exactly what that is, but be clear and concise about what you're hoping these offices um, will do. And so, um, you know, that's a big piece of having a meeting. So that's kind of the one pager that we've got wrapped up. Um, let me go ahead and turn it to Army now, and Army can kind of run through a little bit about what we'll be talking about. Thanks, Josh. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for taking the time. Um, look, I don't think I have to tell anybody here, given the work you do on behalf of so many Americans, that there's a savings and retirement crisis in this country. If we can go to the next slide, um, there's some key stats here, but you experience this on a daily basis. Um, so retirement is the area of tax legislation that most impacts your business that is moving in this divided Congress. Uh, as Josh mentioned, we've got Chairman Neal as a town hall. He has been a longtime uh, advocate for addressing the retirement savings gap and the coverage gap. Uh, savings obviously being the deficiency of how many or how much people don't have that they need and the, the coverage gap uh, is an access question as to how many people are uh, or don't have access to savings vehicles. Um, so ultimately we're going to be advocating for two parallel pieces of legislation, the SECURE Act, which Chairman Neal is the sponsor of in the House, and RESA or the Retirement Enhancement Savings Act, which is uh, the Senate version of that bill, which is uh, sponsored by Chairman Chuck Grassley from Iowa, who's the chairman of the Finance Committee. So as you can see, you have the parallel leaders of the Ways and Means Committee in the House, and a Democrat from Massachusetts, and the, um, the leader of the Finance Committee in the Senate, uh, a Republican from Iowa, leading this effort, uh, giving you some sense of indication uh, of to why this is likely to move this year. And look, um, we've gotten some questions uh, as to where this fits for AIU's agenda. As financial security professionals who help families and businesses secure their financial future, we're in favor of addressing this problem. Uh, as more and more of our members build assets under management practices, the more people have in savings, the more opportunities there are for rollover accounts and to help people manage money. In addition, both of these bills uh, make significant improvements in lifetime income uh, opportunities for annuities and other pieces. Uh, and they enable more small businesses to develop their own plans for their employees, all of which are potential opportunities uh, for you and your colleagues. And as we always say, as the party of life insurance, we're not Republicans and Democrats, uh, we meet our success over time by advocating for things that are a benefit to each other. And that's very much where we are for this entire focus. Um, if we can go to the next slide, the um, some of the things that the SECURE Act and RESA do that's in both bills, uh, it opens up um, multiple employer plans. This allows more small businesses to band together uh, in order to create uh, retirement plans and removes the one bad apple rule. 
and increases the small business plan startup tax credit from 500 to 5,000 and creates a small employer auto enrollment tax credit of up to $500 per year. It repeals the maximum IRA contribution age, which is a reflection of people living longer and working longer, uh, and requires uh, lifetime income disclosure on retirement accounts, uh, which translates the aggregate savings, which might be more than a particular saver has ever seen in their lives, uh, and translates it into what they could buy uh, upon an average retirement age with an annuity, and therefore you get to some of the retirement income illustrations that are so useful. It also creates an annuity selection safe harbor for uh, qualified plan administrators and businesses if they select a uh, annuity provider that is uh, licensed and in good standing by the relevant state regulator, then they have a safe harbor from their fiduciary duty as relates to that. So, um, what are the differences between the two bills? Uh, the, both bills pay for their benefits. They're fully offset by making changes to the stretch IRA. Um, this is a provision that allows you to extend deferral uh, into a subsequent generation. The SECURE Act requires uh, a stretch to be distributed within 10 years. And RESA, the Senate version of the bill, uh, requires balances exceeding 400,000 uh, to per designated beneficiary to distribute within five years. Um, it mm -hmm. also changes the cap on matching contributions for auto enrollment safe harbor plans. Uh, and finally, two things that are in secure but not in RESA uh, is that uh, it increases the required minimum distribution age from 70 and a half to 72, and it opens plans to long term part time employees. Um, we, as you may have tracked in our weekly decoding, uh, decoding DC Friday email product from your GA team here at ALU, uh, the SECURE Act was passed through the Ways and Means Committee uh, a couple of weeks ago and will be on the floor sometime this summer. Hence the ask at the bottom of the sheet that Josh went through with you, ask people to co-sponsor. So a formal way of stating their support of the bill in advance of voting for it and then to vote for the bill. Uh, the secure, uh, RESA was introduced about the same time as the markup, and that bill is uh, pending in the Senate. So we go to the next slide. Okay. And so thank you. We want to take questions. Let me conclude my part by just saying, as, to echo what Josh said, the, the thing that trips people most up about going to the Hill is when they make this more complicated than it needs to be. This is just like meeting with a new client. None of the details matter unless they understand the benefits of what you do for people and families and businesses. And so you want to talk about the intrinsic value of the products and how you help people tell those stories. Uh, if you don't get to the details of the bills, that's okay. Chris Morton, Josh Karen, Jen, Emily, myself, we can do follow-up. We can answer any question you get asked you don't know the answer to. And we're absolutely glad to help in that way. So thank you for dedicating your afternoon to doing it. Yeah, just real quick, we got one question, um, and I'll, Army, I'll let you go ahead and answer this. Sure. Uh, the vote was unanimous. Uh, so they had a unanimous voice vote. All the Republicans and all the Democrats voted in favor of the bill. I, I don't understand. <laughs> so the question was uh, whether or not how the vote broke down uh, in the uh, Ways and Means Committee. So oh, okay. hey, thank you for Sorry. your answer. Um, so guys, you know, again, thank you very, very much. We really appreciate everyone taking the time, not only to listen today, but to come to Transform, to come to CHC Day. It's really a, a fun, exciting opportunity for you guys. We love putting it on. We love having you guys here. We love having you go up on the Hill. Legislators really do look forward to, uh, to your input. And so thank you very, very much for making the time. It's uh, one of the things you can do that is most effective to advocate on, on the behalf of the clients and communities you serve. So really thank you for doing it and we look forward to seeing you.